Welcome to another devlog. This one came quite a while after the last one since I was working my ass off getting the game's demo ready for the Steam Game Festival, which is over now. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into the changes. I added movement speed display to the heads up display. For those who are unaware, you can adjust the movement speed using the mouse wheel. However, there was no display of which speed state you were in. This simple HUD element remedies that in a very simple and understandable manner. I added night vision goggles. They provide an advantage in low light conditions, but exchanges the relatively long range view cone with a radial illumination. This is useful in cases where you are in pitch black surroundings and need to see everything behind and in front of yourself. Initially I wasn't going to add these, since I figured the player's view cone illumination would be enough. The demo version that was playable during the Steam Game Festival provided some good feedback, and the general consensus I got was that 1. People were mistaking the player's view cone for the flashlight, which, to be frank, is a non-issue, since once you realize that it's not a flashlight, you don't have to wonder about that ever again. And 2. People thought the view cone was too bright. Naturally, this meant I had to lower the intensity of the view cone. Since it became less intense, it meant I had to add something which would amplify the overall visibility of the game. And so we came full circle with the addition of night vision goggles. You can now call the game a Splinter Cell ripoff. I made it easy to do that. I added three new gadgets. The tranquilizer rifle... A throwable knife... And the motion sensor mines. The tranquilizer works similarly to the taser. It fires out a limited range projectile. The difference is that it uses up the primary weapon slot, makes a lot more noise than the taser when holstered, and slows the player down more, but as a trade-off has a greater effective range for the projectile. The projectile, however, puts the victim to sleep after 5 seconds, as opposed to instantly with the taser. This is both a drawback and a positive, as players can use a tranquilizer rifle in combination with the taser to time two ranged takedowns at once. Throwable knife? Well, you throw it, and if it hits an enemy, it will deal damage to them. The knife itself is reusable, so once you throw and kill someone with it, run over to grab it, and you can use it again. The motion sensor mines work as you would expect. When someone close to it is moving fast enough, it blows up. This gadget is meant for combat playthroughs. Overall, with these new gadgets, the game's gameplay has more variety, which is nice. I added the ability to cook grenades. Previously, you could only throw them, now you can cook them, which gives you a big advantage in cases when you need to time the explosions and opens up more tactical possibilities to the player. I added a double shot fire mode to the son of double barrel shotgun. Previously, it fired one shot at a time, allowing you to either unload both barrels very quickly or fire off one round and then follow up with a second shot when it suited you. Now you have the ability to switch to firing both barrels at once. It's done by simply clicking the fire mode button. The advantage of the double shot mode is obvious, more firepower. The downside is that if you miss and have no cover, you're screwed. The second downside is that it chews through ammo very fast, so enemies that might have taken a single shot to kill end up being a waste of ammo when using the double shot fire mode. And PC weapon spread now increases the less health they have. They also have a new stat, fear. It increases when they see their allies die, when a bullet flies or lands nearby, and when they take damage. The higher the fear, the lower the accuracy. The idea for this was to make suppressing enemies through gunfire even more viable, as well as to make combat easier through the merit of being aggressive. Granted, you're still fucked if the enemies surround you and greatly unnumber you. For a simple visual uplift, I made dropped mags physical after reloading. They also now make a sound when they hit the ground. It's such a simple addition, yet it makes gunfights feel even better, since now you've got gunshots, shell casings and empty magazines all making sounds and adding to the atmosphere. I added acceleration and top speed scaling to the player when there are a lot of movement direction changes. This was added specifically to prevent peeking in and out of cover at full sprint speed to get cheap shots like so. 
It also makes the player feel heavier, so overall a nice gameplay improvement which will make cheesing even more difficult in certain cases. After a decent chunk of playtesting, it became clear that while increasing damage dealt by everything and for everyone twice introduces some interesting changes to the gameplay, it makes certain encounters too difficult and doesn't provide a big enough variation in gameplay. So now the highest difficulty introduces a new influence on the player. Health impacts your movement speed. So the lower it is, the lower your maximum movement speed is. Your enemies suffer from the same penalty on any difficulty level, but the player only suffers from it on the highest level, to make things easier. I added empty dumpsters which you can dump dead or unconscious enemies into. These are one-time use, that is, once you dump one body in there, it becomes unusable. Levels will not have a lot of these, so they're going to be sort of a luxury. A brief moment of relief for the stealth playstyle player every once in a while. Shadow map rendering received two more optimization passes. The first optimization basically brings a performance improvement of up to 100% in some circumstances. Not joking. For those interested in technical talk, it involves downsampling the obstruction map in an 8x8 pixel pattern, which allows the main raycast portion of the shader to skip 8 steps at once in areas where there are no obstacles nearby. This greatly reduces memory bandwidth pressure and has brought a huge performance bump to weak machines. The second optimization brings an additional improvement of up to 15-20% to and mostly focuses on reducing the CPU overhead of rendering the light sources. The optimization now renders multiple lights of the same dimensions using a shadow map atlas, as opposed to rendering each light individually. This greatly reduces the amount of draw calls and render target switches, which, as a side effect, also increases GPU utilization, since it now spends more time rendering things, as opposed to waiting for commands from the CPU. You might be wondering why I'm going so hard on optimization. Well, it's simple. I've set myself a personal target of at least 144 frames per second for the final game. A 60 FPS target is fine and all, but that's not something to be proud of. So the higher the frame rate I can get the game to run at without cutting the visual side, the better. Currently, the game on my PC runs at frame rates way beyond 144 frames per second. So now it's just a matter of optimizing it as much as possible so that people with low-end PCs can enjoy the game as much as I can. Those are the main changes. The game's current state is that it's mostly finished. What remains for the most part is just finishing up the levels, testing it and polishing existing mechanics. Thanks for watching. Until next time.